Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zen. Hello, everybody. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching all Shonen Jump anime here from this point forward until either the end of time or the end of us, whichever happens first. Though I do like the idea of us taking our AIs and then they just continue watching Shonen Jump for the eternity. <laughs> just forever. Yeah, just for the eternity of everything. Eventually AI will get that good where, in theory, you will never see the end of us. <laughs> <laughs> and I've already Permanent had picture. yeah, and I already have my secession plan, which is once I kick the bucket, I have I have the uh, the plan for someone else to pick up the Wookie mantle and the Wookie channel, and they will continue on as if nothing <laughs> had happened to me, <laughs> and I'll just sound. <laughs> it's like the doctor, the doctor regenerating a Doctor Who. I'll just sound different, but there will be like no references. But this person will also have to know all my bits, so it's gonna have to be a very dedicated fan. If you want to be the next Wookie <laughs> in the next probable like fifty, uh, let's give it ten to fifty years somewhere in that time range. Feel free to tell me, <laughs> and we'll talk about a decision decision plan off screen. But yeah, <laughs> Shonen Archive. So what are we talking about today? Um, Kuroko's Basketball. That's the series we're going to be talking about today for the first time. This is one one of the choices, which is uh, Zen's choice, which was on the list of things to talk about. Uh, Zen, you've seen Kuroko's before. I have. I've seen it all the way through multiple times. Mm -hmm. And this is my first time watching it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very interesting look through and talk through, I think, as you'll be... Oh, this is also great because this means that you just know these episodes by the back of your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm very aware of what happens in these episodes. Perfect. Love to see it. But before we start talking, today we'll be going through episodes one and two. I was super busy with work, so it will typically be five, but next week, the next time we talk about it, it will be the next three, and then after that, it will be five again. Um... My work got busy, sorry about that. I would have gladly watched those other three, but <laughs> limited time. Yeah, I can't can't do what you don't have time to do. Yes, exactly. But we will gladly talk about these two. But before we talk about these two episodes, Zen, because it's a new series, do you know what that means? What does that mean? It means it's time for a little bit of history. What about those people who are saying, what the hell is Kuroko's basketball? Well, thankfully <laughs> for you... I have written up a very short thing after reading the Wikipedia article. Let's go. Kuroko's Basketball, or Kuroko no Basket, is a... Basque. Basque. Kuroko no Basque is a sports manga that was that was written and illustrated by... How do you say this man's name, Zen? <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Tadadashi uh, Fujimaki? Uh, let me, let me uh, look up exactly how it's spelled so I don't... Horribly but this. Uh, Taratoshi Fujimaki. I was close. Fujimaki. It ran from 2008 to 2014 and is in the top 10 best selling sports mangas. Zen, do you have any idea what the top 10 best selling sports mangas would be? Uh, you know what? I can, in fact, find that out for you. No, uh, I already have it down here. I want you to guess. Oh, you have it. I, know, I know Slam Dunk is number one. That is correct. Uh, Slam Dunk. Never. That's... Never not, going away. Uh, no, not not a difficult guess there. Um, Prince of Tennis, I'm sure, is in there. Mm -hmm. You're correct on two of those. Um, I don't know that many sports manga. <laughs> One of these so should you should still. know because you've tried to read it, but you can't because the translations are too crunchy. Oh, I Shield Twenty One is in there. No, the other one. <laughs> oh, oh, Hajime no Ippo. Yep, Hajime no Ippo is number two. Is Ashita no Joe or whatever also one of them? No, it is not one oh. of the top selling. Ah, uh, Subasa, I'm sure is probably one. Uh, of course, go see yeah, our amazing but... Captain Subasa series yeah, for more Captain amazing. Subasa, I'm sure. Um... <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if like think of the other Shonen Jump big. Does, uh, does sports Kanika one. Man count? I'm not counting it because Kanika it's, Man... it's wrestling. But okay, first of all, wrestling is a sport. But second of all, <laughs> Kanuka Man is also about, like, fighting kaiju. <laughs> That's why I didn't include okay. it. All right, fair. The other one I'm uh, not including is Raku Denenshi Blues. Uh, Raku Denenshi Blues okay. is about someone who wants to be a boxer, but it's not necessarily a boxing sport. So it's not like... Okay. It's more about delinquents than that. Okay. 
Uh, oh, Haikyuu is definitely one, just because I know it sold more than Kuroko did. So. Yep, yep, Haikyuu's on there. You've got five uh, of them down so far. And obviously Kuroko is one of them, so that's well, six. Well, yeah, so that's six. You are not going to guess these last four. I'm going to tell you that right I, now. I almost certainly am not. So. so we'll give it up here. At number 10, it was Kuroko. Number 9 is Ace of Diamond. Number 9. Never heard of that shit. Yeah. N- number 9 is Dear Boys. <coughs> number no, the, number 8 is Dear Boys. Number 7 is Shoot. Number 6 is Haikyuu. Uh, then above Haikyuu is H2. And then the top four are The Prince of Tennis, Captain Tsubasa, Hajime no Ippo, and then, of course, Slam Dunk, which is obviously, by far and away, the mo- probably the most popular sports manga <laughs> and most well-known at this point, uh, which just recently got a movie, which we would gladly talk about, but I don't have access to it, <laughs> so... So yeah, that's the other funny thing. I'm actually a huge Slam Dunk fan. I just did not actually read Kuroko's Basket yet. But I think it was also because I was afraid because of how much I love Slam Dunk, I would have been I wouldn't have been able to, it would have been an unfair to judge Kuroko right away. If oh, I, so you would have you would have automatically felt bad toward Kuroko because it's also basketball? Yeah, I would have been too much I would I I needed to give it enough years in between that I wasn't constantly comparing it. And even during this one, I was still kind of comparing it to Slam Dunk because we were going through it. But we'll talk about that more when we actually start it. But just to finish off, um, along with the anime that we are watching through it, it also has five light novels, a stage play of video games, audio CDs, and of course, multiple anime films. Zen, do you know what also it has a whole bunch of? Songs? No. It has well, a lot of yes, but that's not the right answer, I guess. <laughs> no, it it's a not. Of songs. It has a lot of dojinshi, or oh yes, and particularly yes. yaoi dojinshi. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a common thing across sports uh, shonen in general. Actually, yeah, it's not you, just the Kuroko. Thing. Do you do you know who? Uh, which is the forefather? Eventually, we're gonna have to talk about this series. But do you know who was the forefather that popularized the term yaoi? No, it was uh, Saint Seiya. Really? Saint Seiya, it didn't start it, but it popularized the term yaoi because its entire cast is nothing but males with very few women in it. So there's a lot of yaoi for specifically Saint Seiya and many of the men. uh... Interesting. Yeah. Can't wait to talk about it when we get to Saint Seiya. I also love Saint Seiya. Uh, but yeah, there was actually a huge controversy around uh, Kuroko's basketball that that revolved around Yaoi for some reason. Yes, you talk about the Haikyuu animator. Yes, do you know yes. it specifically? I do. Yeah, because this was it's really funny. What happened? Uh, okay, so there is the uh, Haikyuu and Kuroko are animated by the same company. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. One of the animators that worked on Haikyuu um, got moved to Kuroko and was not happy about it. Um, quite angry about it. Um, and so she posted a bunch of drawings of the Haikyuu boys uh, getting down on Twitter, on, on just like her social media page. Mm-hmm. Um, she got in a shitload of trouble. Uh, they made her delete her entire Twitter account. Like, not just the tweet. They made her take down her entire account. Jesus. Um, and then they also said that they're, they're not working with her anymore. Yeah, she, like, freaked out because um, because uh, she got moved off of Haikyuu. And she wanted to stay on Haikyuu. She got moved to Kuroko. Uh, so, yeah, she posted a bunch of porn. And it required the animation company to release a statement that the the porn that she drew of these people um was not official dojin material coming out from the animation company wow so this is another controversy which maybe actually applies to that because this is it i don't if you've heard about this i'll be surprised so after the anime got uh started airing it became super popular in uh dojinshi's uh circles uh but specifically the yaoi ones even though there's no yaoi on it obviously um and it was crazy because it was constantly like selling out or getting really close to selling out. Um, <laughs> it was like 
so what happened is it was getting it was selling really well and then all of a sudden convenience store chains and other places that were selling it uh specifically started receiving letters containing powder or liquid substance in it and <laughs> basically bringing threatening letters giving out threats for specifically selling the yaoi material related to um Kuroko's basketball and this re- resulted in multiple like doujinshi events banning Kuroko yaoi from the site because they were so <laughs> afraid um, they're getting anthrax that's what the the, the idea was like uh, someone's <laughs> out here fucking doing this over yaoi eventually the suspect was found and revealed to be a 36 year old man who was just very sad that how popular Kuroko had actually got it <laughs> he was he was jealous of it of how much it was um that's amazing no wait there's a fucking funny i could die and then here's the best part due to the loss of kuroko basketball doujinshis because of the threat there was a special event that specially focused on only that called kuroko (laughs) ket organized by the comic market predatory committee held during comic ket these motherfuckers said everyone the guy has been caught release the hounds (laughs) Open the floodgates, <laughs> and there were approximately two thousand four hundred doujinshi's released for the event. <laughs> that many people came together and celebrated the the say that thirty six year old man has been caught. Let us be free. <laughs> that's fucking funny as hell. It is. It's amazing, and yeah, that's all you need to know about Kuroko's basketball. So let's actually get into the first episode. This was maybe the most fun I was having research of all the series to talk about. I was like, "God damn, what? <laughs> this is insane!" <laughs> Imagine someone just barring them, saying like, "I'm sending this to specifically only the people who make the yaoi." And then when he got caught, he said, "I'm sorry, I was just jealous about how popular it was." <laughs> That's crazy. Now, now I have Kuroko Anthrax in my search history. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Kuroko knows <laughs> Anthrax. Kuroko knows Anthrax. <laughs> uh, all right, Zen. Okay, God. Tell us about episode one, I Am Kuroko. All right. So episode one starts off with the... Uh, Sayrin High School Basketball Club looking for recruits. You get kind of a little uh, a little intro blurb at the beginning that explains like the Teiko uh, Middle School Basketball Club and talks about the Generation of Miracles um, and talks a little bit about the, the Phantom Sixth Man who no one knows if he was real or not. Cuts to the uh, the like school opening day festival at the start of a new school semester while clubs are all recruiting and whatnot um in in japan I, this is not true in america in japan sports teams are like uh they're just like extracurricular clubs it's not like a, it's not they don't have like an official school team it's just like mm-hmm. you gotta go join the club if you want to get in there yep um, and basketball itself became super popular after slam dunk after slam dunk yeah like popularized the sport in the entire fucking country yeah um so they are out and recruiting and everything for the basketball club they don't get quite the reception that they were hoping for um until a an extremely tall individual uh, comes over and asks mountain of a man up. yeah absolutely huge uh and fill out the form as well name of uh kagami and then they find another form at the last minute that is kuroko's form and it's written on there i was here the whole time even though no one saw him, uh, that is a running joke that doesn't go away. Is that Kuroko constantly says, "I'm I was always here." Um. So they, uh, they also have a really great shot where they're like, "Whoa, he must be good at basketball because he throws some trash, uh, like into a trash can." Yeah, he like Kobe's it. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. And so then uh, we go to, like, the first team gathering in the gym, uh, and it's revealed that the girl is not the team manager like she normally would be, like, in a stereotypical setup. She's actually the team coach. Like Slam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so she has them all take their shirts off so that she can check their physiques, 
And because her dad is a fitness trainer, she, like, has an eye for muscles, and she can tell, like, how muscular and, and capable someone is to the point that she can tell them, like, hey, uh, I bet you can do this, like, you can do lateral jumps this many times and all that kind of thing. Um, she finds Kagami's physique to be ridiculous because he, she's bigger than a high school student should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, Kuroko is there, standing literally in front of her, and she can't see him. And then he again says, hey, I've been here the entire time. Uh, he pulls his shirt off, and he's very unimpressive, extremely unimpressive. And they're all kind of let down, because when they got his uh, application, they're like, oh my god, he's from the the crazy generation of Miracle School, that's amazing. Uh, and he sucks. Yes. And then he gets this dramatic scene with Kagami, where he's like, I was wanting to play you one-on-one and he says one-on-one in english which is so good they do a lot of uh english like like uh in this it's always funny yeah i really like one 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 (laughs) one-on-one i thought that was great um and they play and kagami is devastated to find out that kuroko sucks he's just not good at all um and so then we get to a practice game the next day, and Kagami is basically pulling all the weight. It's the first years versus the second years. So, like, the new applicants versus the old team. Um, Kagami is smoking them pretty hard. Uh, and then it gets revealed that um, Kuroko has been playing the whole time, and no one even knew that he was there. So he's just been out on the court, like, not doing anything. Uh, they start giving him the ball, and he's just, like, losing the ball and all, and it's just not it's not working out. Um, they start triple teaming Kagami to keep the ball away from him because he's the only one that can do anything. Uh, and so these second years start pulling ahead and Kuroko says, you know what, why don't you just pass me the ball and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And they start passing him the ball and he, they start winning because Kuroko is using his uh, his misdirection technique to move the ball around the court very quickly because no one ever knows where he is. He has no like presence. So when people try to like they don't see him on the court because he's just like an invisible nerd that no one looks for. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's able to move the ball around really quickly. Uh, he ends up being an extreme asset and allows Kagami to start getting the ball again. And the first years end up winning. Um, later on, Kagami is at McDonald's and he has a shitload of McDonald's burgers and he sits down at the table only to realize that Kuroko is already at that table. that He was, did not realize before he sat down. Uh, he gives Kuroko a burger and says, you earned that today. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> he asks how strong the Generation of Miracles were, and Kuroko basically says that they are significantly better than you. You don't stand a chance. Um, that just kind of winds Kagami up, and he says that he wants to be the best. And so him and Kuroko make a promise that uh, Kuroko will be the shadow to Kagami's light, and they will make uh, him the best player in Japan. Yeah, and that's the end of the first episode. How you uh, before we get to talk about it? How do you feel about the oh, first OP and first ED? They're both fantastic. I really like OP one. Um, it's not my favorite one, but I think it's probably the one that a lot of people think about when they think of Kuroko. Like mm-hmm. it's it's one of the more iconic ones for the series. Uh, I like I that really uh, they included McDonald's in this OP. <laughs> It's, it's called Maji Burger. Is it called Maji Burger? I've been calling. Yeah. I thought it was just McDonald's or Mac <laughs> Arnold's or whatever fake version of McDonald's you would call it. Uh. So yes, this is the first one, and let me tell you how I feel about it right now. Uh, I really liked it when he got that whole plate of burgers. <laughs> this <There's> something really. <laughs> It's maybe my favorite shot of the entire thing because they do it again in the next episode and I liked it the second time as well. Uh-huh. This is something so funny about like, I want to, let me see, if do they even use the exact same people? No, there's different. The first time he does it, there's a couple watching him and they're both going like, God damn, that's a lot of burgers. And then when they do it the second time, there's a dude in a beanie and he's looking, he's like, God damn, that's a lot of burgers. They're all giving him mm-hmm. the same look. <laughs> Uh, I like that. I kind of liked his introduction about how he almost, he does like the Itachi stare. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, it, like, turnaround? No. Do you remember when Itachi was first introduced and he looked down on Sasuke? Oh, yeah. He does that. <laughs> he does, like, a version <laughs> of that when he's <laughs> signing up for basketball. <laughs> and I thought that was all great. I really liked, uh, when he started dunking. 
because again, it rem- <laughs> it started reminding me of Slam Dunk. Because now, whenever I see a Slam Dunk, the way it's treated in uh, the actual uh, sh- the show called Slam Dunk is that the Slam Dunk is a uh, psychological move. Every time you do it, it's like a debuff that demotivates the opponent after they get dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the slam dunk was used over there. So seeing someone just continuously slam dunk on it, I kept thinking, like, damn, that has to be demoralizing to the same. <laughs> you literally can't do anything as this giant fucking, like, first year <laughs> fucking slams down <laughs> every single basketball. <laughs> which was great. Um, in terms of Kuriko himself, I, another thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and not do it as much, but it's hard for me not to when I just love Sam Dunk so much. I actually like that they went in the exact opposite direction of Slam Dunk, where the Slam Dunk protagonist is the one who has absolutely no idea how to play basketball, doesn't even care about basketball, only really joins it because there's a hot girl on the team uh, on the manager side that he wants to impress and he's also like built seven feet tall so he can naturally slam dunk very easily but he's absolutely shit at basketball this is someone who's also absolutely terrible at basketball but he's not doing it in a way that's trying to be better than the other people on the team he's someone who's actually trying to be in a support role and that made me kind of like him a little bit more because it would have been very tough if it was the exact same character. It almost feels like in a in a way it's taking like both of the parts of the main character of Slam Dunk and kind of giving it to two kind of different characters and allowing them to have two different kind of mindset of how things go. One, the huge athletic ability going to the giant mountain of a man and then Kuriko getting the part of him that sucks but is also the main character. <laughs> so I thought that was a very interesting thing to be doing. Um, I assume, I actually don't know, this is my assumption, that anyone who kind of has to write a basketball manga has to kind of live in the shadow of Slam Dunk just because it's too hard to I, really... I would assume so considering the only basketball manga I can name are Slam Dunk and Kuroko. <laughs> Yeah, it's very tough. It's hard. Like, a lot of people will say, like, oh, you know, when you make a shonen anime, a lot of shonen anime kind of has to have references back to, like, Dragon Ball and stuff. But not every single shonen fight manga gets necessarily compared to Dragon Ball. Funny enough, nowadays they get compared to Naruto if they have more than, if they have three people to a team, which is really funny. Uh (laughs) But that idea of, like, living in the shadow of something and trying to escape it. I definitely feel, and maybe that's another thing of like, oh, Kuriko's kind of in a similar way of living in the shadow of something that's better than you, but not necessarily being intimidated by it, but actually embracing the role that you have and kind of showing support and being and doing your own different thing. Maybe it's a little bit too much reading into it, but I definitely ended up thinking all those things of specifically with Slam Dunk in mind. So I ended up making this first episode, I think, a fantastic showing. It made me feel like it was completely different from one of the most popular things. So popular, it, it popularized a sport in an entire nation, and it made it feel completely different, and I was kind of hyped for it. So yeah, I really liked this episode. I also really liked all the stat looking, too. When she looked at the stat for the windows, and his stats are, like, absolutely terrible. Yeah, they're just garbage. <laughs> absolute garbage and she says like he's it's not even a case of like he has potential he has like uh his potential's almost reached <laughs> like there's not really much yeah, more it is he can't <laughs> yeah he can't grow much more than that no uh which is different from uh taiga when she looks at him she has like a full on <laughs> which is really funny she has like tiger beats and hearts and she's like this is insane <laughs> yeah <laughs> This man boy is just too big and too strong. So yeah, I thought it was a, and then of course, of course, the the game itself was really nice. I really like the ending shot as well when he actually tries to go for a shot and he completely misses. Yeah, he misses completely, and then Kagami uh, slams it in. Yes, I thought that was really nice. So good first episode, a good introduction to this one, and a good looking forward to it. I also was very interested in the idea of there being like a generation of miracles as well. Because they start every episode, I think, having a breakdown of what are the generation of miracles. So mm-hmm. it was a good introduction to that and kind of understanding and hearing of a Phantom Six member. And it made me more curious about the background of Kuriko as well, who seems like a very low key kind of nice guy. <laughs> uh, but that's my impression so far. So, yeah, good episode. How do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, first episode of Kuroko is fantastic. It's really good. Um, 
all the characters in Kuroko have like big personalities. Even kind of Kuroko himself, by being so kind of like mundane and under the radar, ends up standing out because everyone else is so like over the top and have like these big personalities to them. So uh, episodes one is really good. I like how they kind of establish the dynamic early of Kuroko enabling Kagami to do his thing and kind of like being the piece that opens up the court. And like you said, pretty rare in a sports manga for the main character to not be like, oh, I want to be sport guy. I want to be, you know, volleyball Hokage or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So it's nice to see that Kuroko is not doing that. Um, we, we kind of will, Kagami and Kuroko are more or less like joint main characters in this. There's, there's not necessarily one that is more important than the other. Um, and we'll kind of explore both of their different reasons for playing as the series goes on. Obviously there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to it for why either one of them want to play the game, but Mm -hmm. it's fantastic opening episode. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, definitely. And of course, McDonald's is a good bit. I like when he gives him the burger. I think that's a good sign. Because I would have expected him to be very hard to work with, but he's like, no, you did a good job. Here you go. Have a burger. (laughs) Very nice. (laughs) You earned this burger. Exactly. Enjoy that burger. (laughs) Shadow man. So let's move on to the next episode. Episode two, which is called I Am Serious. (laughs) Which is... That's another thing I think Kuroko says at the end of this episode. Um, It is. Yeah. Uh, by the way, do you know why the ep- when they show the episode titles, why it says in the background, Cor- this is Koroko's basketball, or is it something like that? Uh, so the, I think the direct, like, English translation they wanted to use uh, instead of Koroko's basketball was uh, the basketball which Koroko plays. Which that... is like, it means the same thing, but it's just really wordy and sounds terrible. It does. <laughs> that is uh, not great. <laughs> Hence why it's uh, everyone calls it either Kuroko's Basketball or Kuroko no Basuke, depending on how weeby they want to go with it. Fair enough. Yeah, that, if they had used that one, that sounds borderline like a... No wonder it transitioned into a light novel. That's a light novel last day. <laughs> All right, Zen. Yeah, it's not good. But yeah, thank you. I was like, if anyone's going to know this, it's going to be Zen, so I'll ask him then. Uh, so there we go, episode two. I am serious. Tell us all about it. So episode two... Uh, obviously picks up where episode one left off, clearly. Mm. Uh, so there's a tradition among the Saren team where, you know, you're not a, a real member of the club until after you go through the trial period. Um, Kagami is practicing, and he's getting all excited about how the Generation of Miracles is so much better than him. Uh, he rushes in to tell the team captain, his name is Huga, asks him, uh, when, when can I play? And he says, you can't play until you're not a trial member anymore. Um, she gives him an actual application because he did so well in the game and reveals that she gave one to Kuroko as well. And that she'll accept those invitations at 8.40 on the roof. Um, they go up to the roof and turns out that uh, she wants them to essentially um, go and scream out their goals and their dreams uh, off the rooftop to the rest of the class. Um and if you fail to achieve that dream at the end of the year, you come back naked and scream your feelings to the girl that you like from the rooftop. Um, Kagami's happy to do it, and he even jumps up on top of the railing and screams down that he's going to beat the Generation of Miracles and be the best player in Japan. Um, the next guy to go, this one, this I think is my favorite gag in the first two episodes, is he starts screaming his thing, and he's talking about how, like, oh i was sickly as a kid and i couldn't and he talks for like forever <laughs> like telling a full <laughs> like life story about it until eventually rico has to literally like knock him out of the way so someone else can go um one guy says can i say that i want a girlfriend and she says no and she tells him that like two or three times and then finally he goes and he said yeah i want to be the best because uh if i do the girl i like will go out with me uh and she says you know what fine i'll allow it uh, Kuroko is the last one to go, and he says, hey, I'm pretty quiet. Can I use this megaphone <laughs> that he just has? <laughs> and they're even like, where did that come from? And then they don't address it at all. No, I assume uh-huh. he just had it. And then before he can uh, before he can do so, the principal comes up and screams at them and all. Uh, then we do the Maji Burger scene again, 
where Kagami has a shitload of burgers and he sits down at the table Kuroko is that without realizing that he's there. Um, they chat a little bit and he kind of explains that you know, um, in middle school my team had this motto that all that mattered was winning um, and I don't want to play like that. I want to I want to you know help my team be the best team in in my own way. Like I don't want to make it all about winning. Um, Kuroko, who never got a chance to scream his dream from the rooftop, ends up writing it in like the school, like outside dirt, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, Patio of something. Dust. Yeah, in uh, chalk, he I writes think. it outside. Um, and Kagami looks and sees what it says, and it is written out that we'll be the best team in Japan. Uh, and Kuroko is the only one who's not looking because he already uh, knows what it is. And he has the white powder on his uh, on his shirt sleeve from when he wrote it. And you know they're never going <laughs> to catch him for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they pick up a magazine. It's like a basketball magazine. And it's got interviews about the Generation of Miracles in it. Uh, they're looking for Kuroko and notice that he's not in there. Uh, with him just saying, yeah, they forgot to interview me. <laughs> No, Before they, they left. They did interview him, but they didn't put it in. Oh, yeah, they forgot to put it in. Um, he says he just doesn't really care because he's not actually a prodigy like the others are anyway. Um, they're having a practice game again, and Kagami is showing off. And then a guy appears whose name is Kisei. And he uh, introduces himself to the team, and he says that he is from the same middle school as uh, Hiroko. And then asks uh, Kuroko to leave the Seiren team and join them. Kuroko refuses. Um, they kind of talk about how, oh, wow, you're in this article. And they say you're really good. And then Kisi's like, nah, I'm not that good. The other ones are way better than me. Um, Kagami chucks a basketball at his head. And he catches it. And he's like, what the fuck? Uh, and then they decide they want to go one-on-one -on -one for a little bit. And Kisei doesn't even change out of like his... He's in like a suit. And he still ends up playing, and uh, he ends up beating Kagami in the quick one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Kagami does the anime protagonist thing of like, ah, oh, this, this is a, an opponent I can get fired up about. Uh, and then they say that they're going to beat Kisei um, the next time they play. Yeah, and they're going to be having a... What is one of those things called? A... Practice game? Yes. Mm -hmm. Against their team, and I think that's in the next episode. <laughs> Which is a shame that I had to stop on this one, because I was like, ah, oh, I really want to see that next game. <laughs> but we will get to that next week. So that is episode two, Down in the Bag. Uh, this one, I thought was really nice. I Another kind of good introduction to some of the other characters as well. As they kind of get to do their bit. I really did like that bit of that guy where he kind of goes on and on <laughs> about his like... Uh -huh. he, he, did, he didn't even reach to high school yet. He had like gone... I think when they stopped him, I think he had gone into middle school. <laughs> I think they had just... He had just barely mentioned, okay, this is when I finally started playing basketball. And that's when they cut him off. Um... Kuroko and his in uh, his uh, shadow bit is also really good. I like how they continuously keep not seeing him anywhere, and how he does the thing again where he keeps sitting at the table even though he knows this is uh -huh. Kuroko's table. Because <laughs> he told him that last time he was there, he's like, "I always sit here." <laughs> this is yeah, this is my spot. Yeah, I like that bit. I liked it when they asked him uh, when the guy asked him to join the team and also in general why it's this entire reason because like it doesn't make sense you were literally one of the six members even if you are a phantom member you could have gone to any good school and done that and so his idea of just like eh, no i don't really want to do that don't really want to focus too much on the winning and just kind of do something a little bit different it makes me kind of curious about what actually happens on there also like when you actually meet someone from that specific uh team his reactions to him where he's just like oh yeah they picked on us a bunch didn't they Kuroko and he's like I didn't get picked on <laughs> they didn't notice me <laughs> <laughs> every single time he's like oh yeah we're best friends aren't we he's like eh 
He's like, he's like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> he's no selling what? him at every single point. What does he say? He says like, uh, oh, did you miss me too, Kuroko? And he's like, ah, not more than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's like, and he tells him when he, um, all the things he's doing, it's not a joke. It's him being 100% serious <laughs> that he's not actually someone who jokes around, which, uh, I'll believe now. Uh, even though I think that megaphone bit, it's not a joke. He's legitimate. He's just like, yeah, I need this. <laughs> They're not. Yeah, gonna I hear need this me. megaphone. <laughs> Otherwise, they are not going to hear me at all. That's, you know, that's the the vibe I get from this. Um, I like that they're back. Do they do they keep going back to this burger bit? Because I really like this. Burger they bit. they do go back to the burger place a few more times. It's not uh, it's not an every episode bit. But Damn it! it, it they it, it, it's they not, do go back there frequently. Is it like the lighthouse in Yu Gi Oh GX where a light? No, no, it's it, uh, it's basically whenever they need um, an episode for characters to just talk and not be like playing, uh, they'll they'll often be there. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I also think this is the start of seeing a little bit more of the... So the big thing that kind of divides Kuroko from Slam Dunk is that Slam Dunk is very realistic in how it does basketball. Um, Down to the part where the main protagonist does not actually know the rules of basketball. Or really knows how to play basketball for a vast majority of chapters. (laughs) Uh-huh. He just never bothers to learn it. Um, this one's a little bit different. Everyone here knows how to play basketball. Everyone knows how to do that. And they also have abilities and stuff. I think they kind of mentioned them a little bit. I think um, Taiga mentions that he has like a super strong sense of smell. Like he can't. The reason that he wanted to also challenge Kuroko in the previous one is that he couldn't actually smell anything on him. Like he didn't smell weak. He just didn't smell. <laughs> He smelled like nothing, yeah. Yeah, and that's enough to make him like really <laughs> curious about what he's doing here. Uh, Kuroko obviously has the that pass that he has that he's just able to do super quick. And like I think he says even when he touches the ball, he barely touches it at all. And he's able to go through it. And this new guy who has the ability to kind of copy the moves, which he's able to do while watching him kind of practice. Um, so it's kind of cool to see the beginnings of that, and I'm interested to see how that goes forward because I know that makes it a – that's a big difference. That's why a lot of the times you you can just kind of enjoy both of them from what I understand because they're just both going for completely different things and a completely different style. Um, so I'm interested to see actually the first skip basketball game and see how it goes because we've had some of them, but it's not like the full-on – you would say like the, the basketball games that we've had so far are not vindicative of how they look like in the future, right? Correct. Not at all, no. Yeah. And I've um, seen GIFs of what happens later on, so I know that it's like... Yeah, Slam Dunk is very, like, uh, realistic with its portrayal of, of the sport. Uh, yeah. Kuroko is not. Ca- characters get actively... T- there's a there's a ticking clock on one of the characters because of how old they are, and they can't keep... They actively get worse as the more three-pointers they make because they get so tired. <laughs> Yeah, they do kind of, like, talk about, you know, oh, you're exhausting yourself and stuff like that in this, but not any more than, like, you know, Goku would if he's like, oh, my stamina, you know? Yeah, it's more, in, in Slam Dunk, that's literal. It's like, nah, man, I'm fucking tired. Please get me off this fucking court. <laughs> okay, you need to get, there's, like, actual injuries and stuff, and I don't see that kind of going in the way of there, which is, uh... Which is good, there, again. There are injuries in Kuroko. It's actually a major plot point later on. Okay, we'll see about that, then. Um, but yeah, this is another good one. Another, it gets, gets me more hyped up as we start getting, just moving towards the actual basketball game, and we start seeing a little bit more of the Generation guys. I think it's a good idea to start showing off Generation of Miracle Dudes early on, because that's always the good way of showing off how a character can improve. <laughs> Especially as he says, like, if you tried to take them on now, you wouldn't even reach up to their feet in terms of, like, power level. I think is what he says, something similar to that. Like, mm-hmm. you wouldn't even reach that. Like, you stand no chance you would be destroyed. Yeah, like, you have no shot at all, basically, is what he's saying. Yeah, and starting off of what who he calls himself the weakest um, is interesting, and I want to see more of it, and god damn it, I'm really sad that I was not able to finish these other three, because I kind of just want to keep yes, watching. Yes, they're, they're really good. <laughs> they're really good. Uh, episode three and four is the, the practice game between them and uh and kisei school it's good shit mm. okay then i'm i'm hyped for that for sure how'd you feel about this episode zen 
Uh, it's another good episode. I really like Kise. Um, because when they present him, he kind of looks like he's going to be this smarmy douche. You know? Like he's going to kind of be an asshole. Yeah, I actually... he walks in in like a suit. And all the girls are like, oh, he's so hot. He's great. And he's a model. Um, yeah, and then he ends up kind of just being like a like a nice guy. <laughs> just like a, a decent dude. Um, which is funny because um, the Kuroko anime and manga are not hugely different content-wise. Um, but one of the big criticisms of the Kuroko anime is that they made Kisei significantly nicer. Um, he's not... He's still not, like, a douche in the manga, but he carries himself with, like, a a much less, like, I don't give a shit about you attitude. Um, whereas mm-hmm. in the in the anime, he's kind of like a, almost like an uwu nice boy the whole time. <laughs> Perfect um, for the yaoi circles. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so that that is a big criticism of the anime, actually, is that they, they really tone down, like, the the meaner aspects of his personality while playing up on the positive ones, uh, which they don't do with anyone else. So, really? That's funny. Yeah. I can't think of too many other characters where they had to tone down the character a bit. Uh, other than, apparently, they did that for Joel for Last of Us TV show. But I'm gonna oh, really? Him, yeah, apparently they toned him down. I was like, does, does that mean he's just, like, not violently killing people anymore? <laughs> like that, <laughs> He's just not a murderer now? Like, what is that, yeah, is it not like Last of Us where he takes a pistol up until someone's face and fucking point blank shoots them in the eye? Or is that... Is that why he's less of an asshole or he's less of a gruffy man? That's interesting to think about, like... Yeah, I can't think of... I'm trying to think of, like, any characters that got, like, less in treatment. Usually you make them worse, I think. Because in animation... Yeah, well, you... and I mean, it's not like, oh, he was so bad in the manga we had to tone it down. I think it was just that they wanted to sell him as, like, the nice boy. So they were like, let's mm. just make him nicer. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to think of... Like, imagine if they did this to someone else... Like I understand, it's like a little thing of like, huh? Just something. But but if I was if this was a manga that I liked, and they actively like made them like away from being like this asshole, and they were like a little bit more of like an ooh nice boy, I think I would be a little bit angry at that idea. Not to say if maybe he changes over time, and maybe they just felt like upgrading his character to be closer to that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, full on changing of a character is a controversial thing to do it'd be like if you took sasuke and just made him less gloomy it's like yeah he made him like nice (laughs) yeah instead of like uh, doing the full gendo posing which he does for like the first five episodes of naruto he's just like a casual guy (laughs) cracking jokes my my entire parents are dead but you know what i'm still out here living my life (laughs) living my life for my clan it'd be a little bit of a different um conversation so i think i can understand him on that bit but yeah anything else to say then uh no it's just you know the beginning of Kuroko is is fucking really good (laughs) and it's all really good uh there's a lot of fantastic shit ahead I think that the the early episodes are a little bit more like this is normal basketball it doesn't lean quite as hard into like the anime craziness as it does later on um so I'm gonna be very interested to see how you react when they shift into like crazy mode with it because at first they're mostly like, oh, Kagami's got really good physicals, and so does this other guy, so he's really good. Um, and they kind of hint to like, oh, Kisei can copy people. That's you know, that's kind of neat. Um, later on, they basically establish that every member of the Generation of Miracles effectively has a superpower, um, which is what makes them so good. And so it just it starts getting crazy, and they start using like special techniques and shit. It's very much like. Um, it has a lot of battle shown in tropes stuffed into the mm. traditional sports tropes. A little bit like Ice Shield 21 in that bit then, because Ice Shield yes. 21 yes. eventually does. Similar to moves. Ice Shield 21 or like the Prince of Tennis, if you've seen that at all, where they all kind of have like special moves and stuff they can do. Uh, it's it's more that vein than like the strict realism of something like Slam Dunk. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, there's nothing really special movie in Slam Dunk other than the Slam Dunk itself and the Gorilla Dunk. But that's just a slam dunk done by a large man. <laughs> they just call it. <laughs> they just call it the gorilla dunk because the character they make fun of him by saying like he kind of looks like a gorilla. Oh my god, he's going for the gorilla dunk, and he goes like it's just a slam dunk. <laughs> I wonder if there's a ref- if that's a reference then because there's a character in the final um the final game like the last game of the series uh, on the enemy team who has, like, all of his special moves are just named Muscle and then just a version of a regular activity. 
<laughs> <laughs> so it's like the muscle dunk and the muscle press and all this stuff, and it's just him doing normal things. Wow, that's amazing. It might be. <laughs> I'll see what we go with there. I think there. Were, I'm trying to remember if there was anything special about the gorilla. No, there's literally not. He's just like dunking it on. <laughs> I also think the slam dunk was has references to actual like all those characters are based off of real um, basketball players at the time. Famously, of course, the main character Sakuragi is based off of Dennis Rodman. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it's maybe the most surprising thing here. He's like, oh yeah, he's based off of Dennis Rodman. And you go like, what? <laughs> he's based off of who? But it makes a lot more sense when you see his character and the way he acts. He's like, oh yeah, I was heavily inspired by him. <laughs> and obviously there's other people like in Lakers and stuff like that of that era. I'm wondering if that's the same here. If there's any like specific like characters modeled after, um, basketball players at the time. That I don't know. I do know that uh, he did some artwork after the series ended showing, like, what pro teams they would all be on. So there's like, oh, this one's on the Bulls, this one's on the Lakers, and all that stuff. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. But yeah, that's it for Kuroko's Basketball so far. We will talk about it two weeks from now. The other three episodes, there's a part of me, though, that just kind of wants to talk about it again next week when finish up those three episodes. But then at that point, we're going to be, I don't know how your schedule's looking for next week. <laughs> I could probably fit it all in, but. Uh, um, I, I, I can have to let you know closer, too, but it, it's not out of, out of the question because I, I, I've seen so much Kuroko that if I can't watch all three, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. I just know what happens. So kind of okay. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX style where like. You just know it so much. As long as we have the time to record it. it yeah, we'll fine. see. But in theory, next week is, of course, going to be Jujutsu Kaisen and Gintama. But if we can't uh, make it, then I'll make those three in time. Or really, I could just add those three and then watch the five new ones, depending on how I feel when I finish the three ones. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll, we'll go through it. I really do feel bad that I did see the other three, because I really do want to kind of just keep watching it. Ah, but that's it for today's episode of Shonen Icar of Everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to enjoy more stuff from Shonen Archive, you can enjoy any of the other episodes of Shonen Archive of any of the other series we've talked about. At this point, we've talked about a decent number of them that all have their own playlists and stuff, but there's also a singular playlist for all of Shonen Archive if you just want to hear it in chronological order. I just want to go through everything in, in its own little combined way yes you can definitely do that um i am <laughs> good luck if you do it that way but we have it divided up if there's a specific series that you want to watch if you want to see more of zen you can always go to zen's channel uh which is linked down below and by below i mean to the side either to my left or my right you can click it here at the end um if you want some more stuff featuring me there's my channel which you're watching here of course there's other stuff on it in theory that you can watch and that's it for Shonen Archive. Thank you very much for watching. I have to find an opening for the an opening and ending song for this one that hopefully won't get copyright struck in. We'll f I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I can't wait to get when we get to Ultimate Muscle because the Ultimate Muscle song I've tested it before and that song does not get picked up by copyright strike. That's amazing. Do da dum 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 dum. Do the muscle. <laughs> Shake it dum 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 dum. Hustle muscle. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't get picked up at all. No, it doesn't get picked. I've used it multiple times. I used it for uh, Shonen Smorgasbord back in the day. That's amazing. Yes. But yes, that's it for this episode, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>